Right, we're going to look at some aspects of graphs now, which uh, usually people refer to these as maximum and minimum problems um, and maximum and minimum points on graphs. So here we have quite a complicated graph. You certainly won't get anything as as difficult as that, so don't panic, but we just need this to illustrate the, uh, what, what's going on. And you can see that uh, the graph is changing direction every so often. And we talk about the graph turning. Okay, so these are often referred to as turning points. So let's just think of the phrases that crop up here. So we certainly will meet the phrase turning points. And they turn in a couple of ways. They either get to a point and go down, or they get to another point and then go back up again. So these peaks, if you like, are referred to as maximum points. And the lower parts, the troughs, are often referred to as the peaks and the troughs. These are called minimum points. Now be careful with these words maximum and minimum because it is possible for a minimum point to be higher than a maximum point. So these are local descriptions. So this is a local minimum and that's a local maximum. So we talk about local turning points. There are other types of turning points which um, you may have in your syllabus, but it's probably more likely to be uh, in the core two work. And we'll look at those um, in a, a, a later lesson. I'll just, just mention uh, what's going on. If your graph does this sort of thing, like that, then it looks as if it was trying to turn around and it changes its mind. So it goes back again. Now when that happens, it's called a point of inflection. So a point of inflection is, if you like, a graph that can't make up its mind. And it doesn't even have to go flat. It might think, I want to go, no, I'm changing my mind, I'm going to go like that. So we will come across, I think we've put it in our vocabulary, uh, a point of inflection. But it's beyond what we're going to do in this lesson. What do those points have in common? Well, they're all flat at those points. All the graphs are flat. In other words, their gradient is zero. So the crucial thing about a turning point, ignoring the point of inflection, at a local turning point, dy by dx is zero. OK. Well, that doesn't tell us which one it is. It only tells us that uh, it could be either. Now, if you look at the what's going on at these points, here, if we look at the gradient, it's going plus, 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 naught, minus, minus, minus. On the other side here, it's coming down minus, minus, naught, and then it's going up plus, plus, plus. So at a local maximum, the gradient is going from positive to negative. So what's happening to the gradient? Is it getting bigger or is it getting smaller? It's getting smaller, isn't it? It's going from positive to negative. So at a local maximum, the gradient is decreasing. In other words, dy by dx is decreasing. So the rate at which the gradient is changing is negative. And if you remember, we have a, a symbol for the, the way the rate at which the gradient is changing, that's d2y by dx squared. So at a local 
maximum, we have that and we have that d2y by dx squared is negative. So this is what happens at a maximum. Similarly, at a minimum, we have dy dx zero again, but this time the gradient is going negative to positive. The gradient is increasing as we go through the trough. So d2y by dx squared is positive at a minimum. And you, it, it's, it's another one of these things, you're probably getting fed up with all these things where it doesn't do things the right way round in your eyes. You want a, a negative uh, d2y dx squared, you'd love that to be the minimum, but unfortunately it's the maximum. You have to learn those. There is no easy way out. Okay, so let's see then how we use these two rules in order uh, to solve a, well, not a particularly complicated problem, but a problem that requires some thinking. So we'll just write the rules down then. So at a maximum, dy dx is zero, and d2y dx squared is negative, and at a minimum, dy dx is, is zero, and d2y dx squared, my twos are not looking like twos, is positive. Right, so we've got the rules there, then let's um, look at a function, x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x plus 2. So the question could easily be something like find the coordinates of the turning points on the graph, distinguish between maximum and minimum, and then sketch the graph. So let's differentiate. Now we will need d2y by dx squared, so I would advise you to do that as well at this stage. It's easier to get the differentiation out of the way and it avoids making a possible silly mistake. So we do the differentiation first. Then we say to ourselves, okay, what is the crucial thing about uh, a turning point? And in both of them, dy by dx has to be zero. So here's dy by dx. So at a turning point, that has to be zero. Now immediately you separate it from here, you can work on it. If however you work on it and then differentiate it again, you may make a terrible mistake with the second derivative. But you've done the second derivative. So all I'm interested in now is solving that. So certainly I'll divide by three. and factorise, so x equals 1 or x equals 3. Now we're looking for the coordinates of the points. So first of all I need to substitute x equals 1 into there. So y will equal 1 and 9 is 10, 11, 12, take away 6 is 6. If x is 3, don't think I'm going to do this one in my head, 27 minus 54 is minus 27 plus 27 plus 2. So x will, sorry, y will be 2. Now let's start to think about what's happening. 
Now we look at these two tests, d2idx squared. In both of them, we have to find out what d2idx squared is. So let's focus on that here. So if x is 1, d2i by dx squared will be minus 6. Negative, so this is a maximum point. So 1, 6, 1, 6 is a maximum point. The other x value is 3. So if x is 3, not going to get it in the box, never mind, d2y dx squared, 18 minus 12 is plus 6. Positive, so this one is a minimum. So therefore 3, 2 is a minimum. About there. And that is a minimum. And we know it's a cubic. There's only one way it can get from there to there, which is like that. And then it must do something like that. This point here, if we're interested in this, is uh, of course going to be 2, because if x is naught, then uh, y is 2. I haven't been asked to find that point. It won't be particularly easy. So there's my sketch. Another little trap at the end of these questions is to ask you, where is the function an increasing function? Where is it an increasing function? What does that mean? Well, increasing means it's getting bigger. Well, if you look at here to here, it's getting smaller. It's not increasing. It doesn't start increasing until it gets here and carries on up there. It's also, however, increasing all the way up to this point. So it increases if x is less than 1 or if x is greater than 3. And if x is actually equal to 1, it stops increasing and then starts to decrease. So we don't need to include 1 or 3 in the answer. So there you have the technique of uh, maximum and minimum applied to a specific function and an also an idea of this idea of increasing function. Or if they said where is it a decreasing function, that would be between 1 and 3. So let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? Okay, well, I want x on its own. So I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself. But what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. So 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant. Spot on. Well done.